can business owners still have success on TikTok in 2023 going in to 2024? That's the question I am going to be asking Wave Wild, who is a TikTok strategist and business coach on episode two of Creator Confessions. Now, before I bring Wave on and into today's live stream, I'm just going to introduce myself. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Janine. I am a live video strategist, the founder of Boss It's Live, known in the digital streets as Video for Bosses. And I'm very excited to have Wave join me for today's session. So uh, without further ado, let me bring Wave in. Hello, Wave. Welcome to today's session. How are you? Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm doing great and can't wait to chat with you. Yes, I am really excited to chat with you. So Wave, just a little bit about how you and I came to know each other. We met on mm -hmm. Clubhouse. Is Clubhouse even still yes. going? <laughs> I don't know. Is it? Not, I, don't, I don't even know if it's, it's, I'm sure it is still going. But I met you through Sarah Smart Scott. You guys were doing a collaborative uh, room on Clubhouse and we kind of clicked quite, you know, quite quickly. I just loved, I said this to you before, but I'll say it again. I absolutely loved what you actually stood for, what you were doing. You showed straight away that you had a servant heart. You was all about helping, supporting and building mm -hmm. the community. And we're going to talk about how you scaled up and have had the success that you have had on TikTok. But before we get into that, I'm going to ask you, Wave, to tell us a bit about who you are and what you do. Yes, well, uh, like you can see, my name is Wave Wild. Uh, yes, it's my real name. And I'm a TikTok marketing and trends expert. So I help business owners use TikTok like another social media marketing tool to build their audience, to nurture their customers, to make sales, generate those leads, all that good stuff. So it's really viewing TikTok as another social media marketing tool on the other side of that I also help a lot of creators and the business owners uh, with the trends and help them create that top of funnel content uh, and known and built this brand as the queen of trend alerts on TikTok. Uh, no I absolutely love that we're going to talk about you being the queen of trend alerts but it is all about taking TikTok and utilizing it more strategically because we know that mm -hmm. TikTok started well this is my understanding you correct me Wave. we know <laughs> my understanding is that when TikTok first came out, it was more or less a entertainment based platform. So a lot of mm -hmm. dancing trends, etc. That was one of the reasons why myself as a business owner, I stayed away from it because I thought, well, nah, I don't want to be doing that. I don't, don't want to be dancing, I'm, you know, with the kids doing what what is all of that? It didn't make sense to me as a business owner. But one of the things that I know that you have been able to do is very clearly categorically show us as business owners, especially those who may be a bit skeptical about using TikTok, how to use it, like you said top of funnel so if you can talk a little bit more about about that and and on this we do go a bit off piece way but I know you you yeah. can handle it but in terms I'm of the like, whole top of funnel yeah I'm like <laughs> there's a, 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 I'm like there's a million things I could say uh, yes <laughs> well well you share whatever you want <laughs> you want to share because yeah, I know you, you've got the TikTok tea. So like you said, um, a lot of people view TikTok as an entertainment platform. And that's like can be a good thing and bad thing for business owners. But when I saw when I joined, I quickly saw that you could use TikTok just like, you know, Instagram as that social media marketing tool. And, you know, very quickly, yes, there was all that dancing and, and fun, silly stuff, but a lot of people started creating educational content. And that's where as a business owner, you know, you really want to focus your efforts, right? You're primarily going to make a lot of educational content that positions you as that authority figure, the, you know, that so that people trust you. So that was one of the, like the main big things about TikTok. Yes, okay, let me yes. talk about that. It just came back to me. So <laughs> I also saw that, you know, there is a huge emphasis on, on going viral on TikTok. And yes, everyone wants to go viral because it's exciting and it's fun. But I realized that you don't really need to go viral to have success in your business. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is really cool because I can basically use TikTok 
just like I use other social media platforms, which is all about attracting the target audience about the right followers, you want the right followers. And a lot of times when you go viral, you will get eyeballs on you who are not exactly your target audience just through that nature of virality and, and being so seen. So uh, that's what I love about TikTok. You know, you you know, you can go viral if you want to, if that's your goal. And there, are, it, there are pros and cons to that. But um, you don't, you know, you don't need to chase it. You don't need to focus on that to have success. You just need to attract the right people, which you can then nurture and convert to customers. And I love that you said about helping us create educational content to attract our audience, our idol audience, because mm -hmm. essentially, for me, that was the conflict that I had with TikTok. Like, I want to come on to the platform and be seen as the go-to expert. How can I do that? And so you have shown us how to have the mixture and the blend of trends, mm -hmm. understanding how to use trends, because I did your course, <laughs> but mm -hmm. also how to, you know, basically to have the balance of using the trends, but having your educational content and having that be, that resounding message, so to speak, so that it's very clear to the audience you're trying to attract on TikTok that they can, you know, what you actually are all about. Absolutely. If you think about YouTube, we go there for educational content to figure out, you know, how to do things. Well, TikTok has really, really turned into that over the years, you know, especially with the SEO features and how people are using search to find uh, content that they're specifically looking for and not just scrolling their for you page whereas in the very beginning of TikTok, you know 2019 2020 that is how that was the main source of discoverability and it is still a big part of discoverability uh, but the searchability and being found through creating specific content um, is is amazing on TikTok as well because there has been this huge push now to focus on when you're creating your content, making sure that you're optimizing it for SEO so that there is that mm -hmm. discoverability. And we'll talk a little bit more about, about yeah. that, but I wanna move on to the next question, Wave. So the next question for you is, how did you start your business? Because we wanna know about Wave Wild, the queen of trends, but we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that part yeah. in a moment. But I wanna know, and if you can share with us how you actually got started with your business. I know you've got an amazing story around that. Yeah, so pre COVID, I had a business where I was creating content for business owners, primarily photography based content, creating, uh, you know, personal brand photography, some video content for uh, for specifically business owners. Uh, and then the pandemic came around and I had a friend, our mutual friend, Sarah, who was like, you should really check out uh, TikTok. It's a lot of fun. And at the time, you know, I was just kind of really tired of Instagram. You know what that's like. We all know what it's like. And I was like, okay, this seems like a really fun place. I love that they're incorporating the music and it's it's uh, very creative. You can do lots of creative different things with it. And I just started posting videos. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just watching what other people were doing and doing the mix of like photography tips, personal branding types of tips, mindset. And I had a video go what I would call semi-viral now. It's like 100K views. That was a big deal back then. And, and yeah, I, had, I was sharing that with my audience and people started asking me questions like, you know, how are you, how do you make videos and what are you doing there? You know, what are the best practices and those types of things. And I was like, whoa, light bulb moment. Like, wow. Um, I could be my friend's Instagram coach. Like, why couldn't I be a, a TikTok coach? Like, I feel very aligned with this. I feel like my background in personal branding and digital marketing could really help people, you know, create something unique, create a brand on TikTok. And I could really help business owners uh, generate leads and make more sales. And the fact that you just were innovative in the sense that people were asking you the questions and so yeah. you quickly saw well they're asking the question so there there is a need here and there is also mm -hmm. clearly a gap so why don't i lean into it and i really do like that because i think a lot of the time for business owners or creators we get stuck in this whole thing of well can i should i is it possible and then we ruminate and i'm speaking from experience here we ruminate on whether or not we can do something and then the ship has sailed and we know with tiktok how quickly yeah. things move I've on pivoted so quick I did a 180 and you know I'm very <laughs> I'm, I'm very grateful that I had the ability to do that um yeah so yeah it was uh it was it was great and so I I hope that those that are listening to this today will be encouraged that if there is something that they see that there is a gap 
Or again, if people are asking questions around that specific thing, or even if you have that intuition, intuitively something says, you know what, there is something here. I, I haven't got it all figured out, but I'm going to actually go for it. I'm going to try it. I think that this is yeah. an example of what can actually happen because happen because you have had amazing success, really, really have done so well on the platform wave. You are an example to be led by. And I believe that you started a trend within itself with (laughs) the actual trend alert. So the next question I wanted to ask you is, how did you become known as the queen of trends on TikTok? Because we've seen so many people afterwards coming, (laughs) trend alert, trend alert, all of that. But you are the original. No one can say, listen, I I, I know you are the original <laughs> queen of trends. So do tell us how you became, before you do that, we've got a couple of comments. We've got Sylvia Johnston. Thank you for joining us today, Sylvia, who said she absolutely loves TikTok and she's absolutely loving the conversation. Yeah. So thank you so much, Way, for sharing. So I'm going to pass it back to you. Yes. Well, uh, you know, I was scrolling TikTok back in 2020 and I noticed I'd kind of see patterns, right? In people, you know, doing doing the trends and putting their own spin on it. Um, and at that time, I had seen some other kind of TikTok coach type of people announce like a trending sound, like saying, use this sound in your video, it'll go viral. And that, you know, it didn't feel right to me because I know I can't tell people like, I can't guarantee if you use the sound, your video is going to go viral. That didn't feel in alignment with me, but I really loved the trends and I loved watching how different niches would put their own spin on them. And so I realized that instead of like announcing trending sounds, I could actually announce the trends and explain what you should do in the trend, right? Because that's, that's how I define a trend. It's something, it's an action that you have to take when you're using the trending sound. You can do anything with in the video, you just putting the sound in there. But with the trend, you actually have to perform some type of action, like you have to pretend like you're crying, or you have to close a door and put text on a screen, something like that, you actually have to take an action, but you want to adapt it to your niche. So I started announcing the trends. And I had a a lot of success with that. And people started calling me like queen, uh, which, you know, is a little bit more of like the Gen Z slang. And I was like, Oh, okay, well, I guess I'll just own it. I'm going to claim it. I also had like, um, a while ago, a personal brand coach who was like, just claim it, like claim whatever it is that you want. If you want it, you claim it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to claim this. I'm going to claim it. And I just started calling myself that. And I realized that, you know, people really liked this content because essentially at the core of what it is, it's a content idea and creators need constant content ideas. (laughs) So I made it into what I call an original series and I would do them several times a week. And um, that's how I, you know, help to build my brand. And I absolutely loved the way that you delivered it. And I want to just just pull on what you said about owning it, that you took that and you owned it and you made it your own. Because I think that when we step into something and be quite bold about it, people will respond to it. At 100%, I mean, I never questioned it. I loved the way you did your new trend alerts. You had your crown, <laughs> you came into the screen, you had your little little jingle, your little shimmy that you used to do. And yes, but the thing is, is that it was so that made you stand out number one and I I talked to my clients about this I'm sure you do with yours as well yeah is that you had a unique concept and we're going to get to that but you own it's the owning it because sometimes people will be like oh I'm going to try this and it doesn't or quote unquote copy and we're going to talk because this is the creator confessions they'll try and replicate but because they number one they're not the original but number two they're not owning it it just Uh does not trans (laughs) oh here it is (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> have to blow the trumpet for Wait, you my on my shirt niche <laughs> love it but no absolutely 100% I think that it's really important that we own things that you know number one try something recognize the actual gap the need number two step into it number three really own it wave that's so that's what I mm-hmm. get from, from the whole thing around the queen of trend alerts go ahead you want to say something yeah and I mean I realized that like very quickly on TikTok you need to stand out, right? That is how you get people to watch your videos. Like you need to stand out. So that's why I emphasized having a catchphrase or like a little intro at the beginning, wearing the same outfit, you know, wearing a, that my silly dollar store crown, um, which I then now have a collection of crowns. But uh, yeah, so that people would recognize me and be like, oh, that's that girl 
that does like tells me what the trends are. I'm going to watch the video. Or I'm going to save it. Or I'm going to follow her, whatever. They're going to engage with it. Uh, so that's like key, key tip that I have for Love all that. my clients is we have to figure out a way for you to stand out. Yes, I want to give you a high five. I'm going to talk to about that in a moment. Uh, we've got Sylvia Johnson has said, wave, this is brilliant and what I've been looking oh, for. Yay. So guys, those of you that are listening to today's session, please make sure that you connect with Wave. All her information is going to be uh, added at the end in the comments. And we've got Carita Robert Green, who was our guest expert last week on Creative Confessions episode one. Thank you very much for tuning in as well. Don't forget to invite and share, ladies. If you feel this is a valuable session and Wave is dropping the nuggets, gems and jewels, but I just want to reply to what you said as well, wave about having that that as I said the unique selling point and we're, we're going ahead of ourselves on the, on the mm -hmm. question that I've got for you but that was something that I was very big on I mean Sylvia has followed me for a long time Carita as well but back in the day before you knew me wave I used to have blonde hair <laughs> I used to go what? live <laughs> yeah blonde hair <laughs> and I used to ladies those of you that are here um, you can vouch for that hello Martine as well so I used to have this blonde hair and that's how I kind of stood out when live streaming first came out back in 2015, 2016. But not only that, I'd have little cat ears on and I would dance at the beginning of my live stream. And I did that because yeah. my community was all about women of worth. Wow, empowering mm -hmm. women. So I would go on to that live stream and I would, it was the same thing I would do every single time. I, now when I look at the videos wave, I literally cringe. I'm like, oh my gosh, you did that. But the point was- I know was, that feeling, yeah. Yes, it's like, so you did that? But back then, it was something that was new, live streaming, people still around what I do, still fear showing up on camera, sharing their story. Can I actually, you know, frightened to make a mistake? And I was there just like, come on, share your st story, do your thing. And it really kind of brought community together. So it's so important to have that, that unique thing that sets you apart, but also as well, it helps people to be able to feel like they too can do it and they can come out of their, yes. their, their shell as well. And I think the lesson here, don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> Absolutely. <100%. laughs> you know, we look back and we cringe now, but that it worked, right? It worked. Yeah. People are attracted to that fun, uh, that fun vibe and the energy that you emit through video. Which moves us on to the next question, Way. What has been your USB for growing a successful business on TikTok? Now, I'm going to say, we obviously know it's not just the fact that you had your crown. You say, new trend yeah. alert. It was so much more. It is so much more than, than dancing with a pair of cat ears or a crown on. It is more than that. So I just want you to share a little bit about what has worked for you uh, with growing your brand on TikTok. Yeah, well, one thing I did in the very beginning that gave me a lot of confidence and kind of launched my business really, because um, I, I started small, right, uh, is going live. <laughs> there we go, going live. You're gonna love that I said that and offering uh, account reviews. So as soon as I got to 1000 followers, I would go live and do these like little TikTok audits. So it was to help grow my account, get exposure, but also offer some value. And I would look at people's accounts uh, just for a few minutes and give them some tips. And then I would say to them, okay, well, if you want to book, like, I think I started with 15 or 20 minutes, uh, a 15 or 20 one-on-one -on -one little session, you can do so in my link in my bio. And it was super cheap at the time because I was just learning like $15 or $20 or something like that. And then over time I increased it, but doing, and I would, after the live, right, I would have so many of these bookings. It was a little bit overwhelming at the beginning, but I did it and I actually loved it. I loved talking to people one-on-one -on -one and really figuring out what they were struggling with, what was the problem that they were having, and then thinking about the solutions. So I did, I don't know, maybe I lost count 300, 400 of these. And really what I learned from that whole experience is what formed the basis of my first course. Uh, so it gave me a lot of confidence in just doing that work and really, really finding out what people struggle with. And I will tell you yes. the number one thing people struggle with is learning how to make video content, like short form video content. It is, yes. you know, a new marketing method. Uh, and a lot of us older people, like we didn't, we don't learn this stuff. I know I'm scrambling. We don't learn this stuff in school. Like we didn't learn it in high school. Whereas, you know, Gen Z, they're raised with it. They're like natural content creators. So that was kind of the biggest problem and a lot of the stuff that I focus on. One last thing I want to say and really learning how to communicate a message 
through short form video. And you do that really well. And I like the fact that you said mm. that you started small, but what you offered, which was bite-sized digestible chunks of value to the community you were mm. serving. But in return of that, you were able to find out exactly what the problems people were having, create the appropriate course program that spoke directly to the problem, which is, that was, yes. again, why you sold out and why you've done so well. So I hope there are those of you that are listening that are, might be thinking, oh, well, how do, I, how do I translate what I'm doing? And how do I then get to the point where I can have success? Well, number one, I, I hear having conversations with people, creating something, number one, that was high value, affordable. Because in the beginning, it, it is like that, isn't it? You, you don't go straight mm -hmm. to the top of the mountain. You create no. something <laughs> small that's affordable and, and you're able to, in talking to people, giving people that space to actually talk and build a community around it. I was just going to ask you quickly, which is not on the, the questions. If somebody isn't quite sure how to get started, would you say a good starting point is just to do a bit of storytelling, sharing about your day? Or is there anything specific that you would like to share that, that works really, really well? And like I said, it's slightly off piece, but I know you can. Um, well, you're amazing. I think what's really interesting is that now that we're a few years into short form video marketing, there are now various video formats that have become standard to create. Like we didn't have these in the beginning. Uh, so, you know, knowing what those are will be really helpful because a lot of times when I'm coming up with an idea for a, a video, um, I come up with the idea and then my next question is like, how do I want to communicate this? Do I want to do a talking head video? Talking heads, pretty easy to create, very popular on TikTok. Or, you know, do I want to do um, a transition, tell the story through a transition? Like there's, do I want to do make a duet? There's so many ways that you can communicate information. I do have a guide on this, <laughs> nine short form videos. Uh, I don't know if you have the link for that, but I can share it. Uh, yes, it's also please on all my do. socials. Uh, yes. Nine short form video formats you can make in like under 10 minutes. But yeah, so think about that because a, a lot, over time, I've seen, you know, people really, really focus on the things that are not as important. They get really hung up on like, what hashtag should I use? What sound should I put in my video? You know, what time should I post? Uh, all that type of stuff. And I'm like, you know what, let's first focus on what you are trying to communicate, because we know 100% from our analytics that if people resonate with it, if they watch it, they like it, they engage with it, share it, save it, all those things, you will get more views. It does not matter what time you posted, what hashtags you used, all that kind of stuff. Those little strategies that we can think about and implement, but let's focus on the message first. So I hope that provided some insight. Yes. Um, yeah, into the, and, and study TikTok, see what people are doing. Now that I've said talking heads, yes. if you scroll, you're probably yes. gonna see a lot of talking head videos. I'm really, really glad that you have shared and you spoke about the things that people get hung up on and worry about. And they're things that I have myself as well in terms of timings and all of these little things that then take up your time and stop you mm -hmm. from actually creating because it's too busy worrying about. Oh, I bet. So that was a really, really useful way. Thank you so, so much for sharing that. So I want to move on to the next question. And what have been some of the challenges of growing your business on TikTok? Not just for you, but say, for example, for some of your clients or some of your entrepreneur friends on the actual pl platform itself, what has been the struggle? I think, you know, for me, um, I have learned a lot of, I've taken a lot of digital marketing courses, worked with a lot of coaches, and I have been really taught to over deliver. And yes, I'm all about over delivering, but I think I might've got confused there because I was just doing a lot of stuff for free for a long time, uh, especially, you know, I had an email list where I was doing a free trend report for a year, about a year. And I noticed that a lot of other people had started to like, pretty much every social media manager under the sun start to do these trend alerts, not exactly the same way as me, but in their own style and, and way. Um, and that they were monetizing by, you know, whatever, creating paid text messages, emails, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, this is crazy. Like I've been doing this for so long for free. And like, uh, so then I started, I switched and, and created um, a paid platform 
for that, for the the trend report. And I broadened it to include, you know, Instagram reels and YouTube shorts to cover all short form platforms and all that sort of thing. But I think, yeah, I was so scared of what people would think about me if I like made something paid, like had a paid offer and like always just wanted to do everything for free to over deliver. But really, that's not, I think, the definition of over delivering for your client. So that was one thing for me. Um, I'd say the biggest struggle with clients I've had is consistency. (laughs) And you Mm. know, that's, that's a that's a thing for a lot of things in life, right? People struggle to be consistent, whatever it is, go to the gym, (laughs) whatever goals we have, eat healthy, post on Instagram. Um, But consistency is has been a, a big one for people. So yeah, I can identify with what you were saying around the doing a lot of things for free and questioning whether or not can I actually charge for this I I spoke about this on episode one of creative confessions around my fear around finally putting something paid out there because I had built a platform and women of worth community five plus thousand women and seven wow leaders and we were doing so much to really support and edify the community that when it came to me putting something out there I was so scared to do it because I thought well number one I didn't want to deal with the rejection and I questioned whether or not that I could so I think that that is something that so many people do struggle with and I I encourage my clients so I encourage those of you that are listening and I'm sure you you would lean into this as well wave is that don't be afraid to number one, charge <laughs> for, for what you're doing. Uh, number two, charge your worth as well. And also when you're ready to put your prices up, like don't be afraid to do that. Otherwise, we then will keep ourselves way too small. And I think that what you've shared is something that we, yes. we've all struggled with, right? And definitely mm-hmm. 100% the consistency. I mean, yeah, that's something that my clients have struggled with. I see people doing that. I see the conversations out there. So, you know, whether it is live stream, short form, long form video content, myself and yeah. Wave are both saying, you know, we're echoing the same message, aren't we, Wave? That we're sharing to you that the way you scale up to the top of the mountain is by being consistent, is by showing up, is by, you know, building community, you know, sharing value, but also not falling off in the tough times because we've had tough times, right, Wave? I'm, I'm sure you've you've had your your struggles as well and your your challenges with with TikTok. Uh, we're going to talk about that in for a moment. Sure. For yeah, sure. We both have I just wanted to say, you know, that the best way to be consistent is to have a plan, right? And well, to stick to that plan. But that's what I would focus on with clients is uh, creating that content plan so that they can stay consistent and they know what they're posting and then really focusing on quick ways to make video content that doesn't seem so overwhelming. And just the path of least resistance, right? That's what yes. we want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a couple of people say great insights. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Martine, for your comment. And we've got Stephanie over on LinkedIn who said that was great information. Thank you so much. And we're going to continue on with the great information. So, Wave, the next question for you is this. What have been your biggest successes so far? When, and I know you've had many successes, <laughs> but what would you say would be in terms of let's just keep it TikTok, if it, or if you want to expand beyond that, well, it's entirely up to you. But yeah, what would you yeah. say would have been your biggest success? What's maybe? related to TikTok in my career, but I think overcoming my fear of speaking on a stage. Uh, so that was something I wanted to do for quite some time, but very, very scared to do. And uh, I had the opportunity to speak, I think it was a couple years ago at Social Media Marketing World. And... Uh, I I did it. I overcame my fear. So that was a big one. And since then, uh, I've spoken on several stages and continue to speak on stages. So that was a big one, a success for me. Now, I will say I still, you know, get nerves. I think everyone does when they go on stage. I'm not like super confident pro. I'm no TEDx speaker. Um, And yes, you know, I would love to like invest in some sort of public speaking more education down the road. But uh, yeah, that was a, a big fear for me. Um, thinking about how shy and introverted I've been my whole life uh, <laughs> at, to, you know, being on a, a stage and being seen as amazing. Expert. So for sure. Yeah. So you're doing what Sean Cannell speaks about, punching fear in the face and doing yeah. things afraid and moving forward and being on stages and just continue, continuing wave to go from strength yes. to strength. 
And I've also had my fails that. on stages. I've had good ones, oh. good experiences, and I had some bad ones too, which are all just learning lessons. Have you have you yeah. done any of the falling or up the stage, up the stairs, or up the stage? Have you done any of, of those fails? All oh, oh wow. Very close <laughs> to it. Very close to it. Yes. Uh, I couldn't see uh, that social media marketing world last year. I did not, I need glasses to look, you know, to see things kind of farther away and uh, I didn't take my glasses on stage and the the prompter that they put in front of you the confidence prompter was far so far away I had to like I stood on the very edge of the stage like Let's almost see. falling off and being like oh, several no. times through my presentation being like I can't see that and then having to like look over to the side where they have the giant screens for the audience oh, wow. to see and being like what is what is my next like you know being so nervous yeah. and then throwing me off and and all yeah. that it was um yeah <laughs> uh, it was trying so hard not to fall off but I was right on the edge but you was you was you was you was teetering yeah. on the edge were you <laughs> yes but you still yeah. did it like the yeah. queen that you are you <laughs> finished the assignment <laughs> you understood the assignment and you finished I, it well I did I, I I don't know if I got an A but I I, I finished <laughs> it I, I did the assignment <laughs> amazing yeah moving on to the next question tell us what you think the predicted trends might be What's going to happen in Ooh, 2024? Okay. okay, well, definitely more, I think more AI generated content. However, um, there's a little bit of pushback on that right now in the industry. I, I know TikTok recently released this feature where you, I guess, um, you sh yourself, you should be self um, claiming that it's AI generated. Although I noticed people don't, but I think TikTok also might be also slapping a sticker on content it thinks that is AI generated. Um, so I think we're gonna see more of that and that's just across all of the mark, all social media platforms okay. uh, is more of the AI generated content. But when it comes to, I think more of the like trends, trends that I talk about, yeah. I see photo carousels as super popular on TikTok. So this Ooh, is similar nice. to Instagram. You can upload like to 10, um, 10 photos and they slide through. Uh, you can swipe them or on desktop, they automatically slide through and people add text to the photos and it's a great way to tell a story. Uh, if you want to see an example of that, go to We Love Markers. It is absolutely blowing up on TikTok right now this account called we love markers they do the photo carousels and they have the markers just like they take a photo of the markers just standing up they use like some putty to make them stand up and then they give the markers a story <laughs> and wow. that account is just growing to like a million followers in a matter That's of crazy. weeks so it, it's kind of crazy they, the, it's a silly story I mean it's a very kind of like mean girls type of story but they give mm. characters to these markers and they use the slides you know to share the dialogue yeah. and tell the story so very powerful for that photo carousels um, are rocking it CapCut templates I find are are still popular maybe not as much as they were in early 2023 but i think they'll still continue because they're just really fast and easy ways to make content that doesn't even require you to show up on camera when you just have to submit a photo uh so i think those will be popular as well and then of course more opinion based content we see that a lot right now on TikTok. i think more of that uh, more people sharing opinions, experiences, thoughts, feelings, uh, that sort of thing. But I actually haven't leaned into the carousels as yet, but I know that we've spoken about this before that you said that they're, they're doing quite well. So I think I'm going to explore that because one of the things that I will say that I've noticed way that I'm trying to figure out how to make it work to my advantage is number one, stories. So a lot of people are oh, a bit blah about TikTok stories, but one of the things that I've noticed is that I'm getting a lot of traffic via my stories. And one of the things I've noticed so far that has been a pattern for me is that if I post my first story, that's a video, it does really, really well. Mm. Like my most recent story is over a thousand <laughs> views and it obviously tapers off, but it does, if I put a picture image, an image, picture image, you get my point, <laughs> but yeah. image, it doesn't do as well, but they're still getting traffic. Mm. I'm getting people via my story. So I've been been consistent with posting stories 100% and I'm seeing how that's going to continue to yeah. work out. I yeah. love TikTok stories. I think people don't use them enough. I think they're a great way to speak directly to your followers since they're primarily seen by your followers, whereas your TikTok videos, you want to speak 
to more of a stranger, to appeal to a stranger on the For You page who doesn't know you. Uh, so stories, probably one of the most underutilized features for business owners on um, TikTok. You can use them a, a lot of the same ways as Instagram. I was going to ask you, you mentioned about it going out to your follow so followers. So with regards to stories, are they also going out to the FYP as well? You can actually change this in your settings. You can change who can see your stories. So I have it set to everyone. You can put it to followers if you want. Um, and they will go on the For You page. And yes, some strangers will see your stories, but they're not as popular uh, on the For You page. It's mostly followers. The more, again, stories are engagement based. So the more engagement you get on your stories, the more people will, they'll push it out and more people will see it. So you always wanna optimize for engagement, likes and comments, use the poll feature. Um, it's really the only engagement, uh, you know, sticker or thing that they have on TikTok stories. So aim for engagement to get wider visibility. Well, thank you very much for that tip for me. I hope you guys have made a note. Use your stories. <laughs> Start yeah. doing carousels and use. I love them. I was scrolling through them this morning. I was, yeah, so it's <laughs> curious what people no, are posting. Fun. Yeah. Good fun. Yeah. Next question is if you have to start your business all over again on Tickety Chalk, what would you do differently, Wave, and why? Oh, good question. I think I might have, I don't know, sometimes I feel like maybe I should have moved even faster. Um, I feel like I could have gone bigger and faster and wider with my Queen of Trend Alerts brand that I kind of went slow with it in regards to bringing it across to other platforms and uh, really building that brand. So I think I did that and, and including the paid offers along with it. I think I was really slow in doing that. I would go faster and yeah, really yeah. push it and like shove it down people's throats. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, like, need it. Is, you know, <laughs> claim it even more. Um, so I think that's one thing. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I can really hear that for me. I think with anything, sometimes I have the tendency to move too slow. And like you said, go faster. Like, oh, I don't want to be into it, shall I? And then by the time I've made the move, you know, the ship's already sailed. So I do think it's important to innovate, innovate quickly. Obviously, you know what you're doing and, and be clear and have a strategy yeah. around it, but just don't, you know, anchor around too much. And I think, you know, one of the reasons why was because I went back and forth a lot of times being like, I don't want to be just like that trend girl. And I want people to right. like, because I got feedback sometimes people were like, oh, you just do trends. Like you actually provide strategy and tips too. And I'd be like, yes, I do. <laughs> and then I was like, oh no, people only see me as the trends girl. And I want to be known as like the TikTok expert. And so yes. I kind of wavered back and forth with some of that. Um, and I also realized that when I first um, started doing the trends that it, you know, my my primary biz target audience is business owners, but a lot of the trends, they attract, uh, you know, people who are creators, they don't necessarily have a business, they're not selling a product or a service. So I had like a very mixed audience. So it took me a while to figure that out. So I wish I had a service, which I do now, uh, earlier, which caters just to creators, and then one to, you know, uh, business owners as well. So the next question I have for you is, as this is Create Confessions, please do share with us a <sighs> confession around your industry, around you okay. know, TikTok coaching or, or whatever. Um, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. This is an easy question. <laughs> um, Go for it. I, and I, I think this probably is similar in the Instagram coaching space, but um, it can be really frustrating sometimes when everyone is giving different advice and then people come to you and they're like well so-and-so said to do this and so-and-so said that I should be posting at this time and I've been posting five videos a day like what do you think and it's like okay when you follow lots of different social media coaches you're gonna get a lot of different opinions <laughs> and you know, there's reasons why they do that. One could be is that because they're trying to be polarizing and stand out by saying something different, or, you know, having a polarizing different opinion on something, or they've just had different experiences, and that's valid as well. But so I would recommend like, find one or two that you really resonate with copying. <laughs> I've had a lot <laughs> yeah. of people 
copy my content like word for word. It's just crazy. It's like, okay, you're a, a marketer. Sim. Like one of your skills should be learning how to say the same thing in a different way. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, wow. Yeah. So um, I think that's also rampant all over uh, all kinds, every yeah. industry, all over I social so. media. Yeah. Yes. I see it a lot. So. Yes. 100%. I definitely thought that that was something that you was going to speak about in terms of not the copy inside of things. Cause like you said, that by default happens, but the whole thing mm -hmm. around this, the advice, the, the, the noise around, you should do this, you should do this mm -hmm. and you should do this. And I, and I, one thing that I find, you know, in the TikTok space, that's quite frustrating is this constant conversation around if you're stuck at 200 views, if you're stuck at 200 I know because people are really, that, yeah. It's just, I find it really annoying that that's constantly the, the resounding message that's coming from a lot of coaches. And, yeah. you know, you, people may disagree with me about it, but I think that it's just constantly perpetuating this whole thing around if you have just this amount of people, it means you're failing, your content is mm -hmm. failing. And there, it's, yeah. people get stuck in this whole thing around because we know that TikTok historically is, you know, people have wanted to go by, have been able to go viral. And it's, yeah, if you want to go viral, da, 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 if you're stuck at, it's this constant yeah. having people in this whole thing around the numbers, which makes them feel, I think, a lot of people feel inadequate or feel like their content is failing. And then, you know, without going too far over and too deep into it, it feeds into a lot of issues around people's confidence, mental health, and all of these different things. So I know people get onto and jump onto things because that's the thing to talk about. But I just think it just yeah. creates this narrative. And again, like you said, when so many people talk in the confusion with you should do this, but then this person said this, oh, but this person over here said this. And especially when it's the, the coaches that are the seemingly pe the go-tos because they've got the mm. bigger numbers, right? What do you think? I'll, I'll let you speak on that. I think there's like different styles of coaching. There's some that focus more on virality and then there's some that are more for, for business owners. And I've even seen like niche ones now. Like there's someone, there's TikTok coaches for people who are musicians or TikTok coaches for real estate agents. I've seen those. So people I've have seen even like too, niche yes. within the niche. And you can see that on Instagram too. Um, so the whole 200 views thing. Yeah, I get, I get it. Like I heard that language and, and you know, a long time ago. And I used to kind of repeat that back because I thought people identified with that. But I think overall, they're just trying so hard to speak to this pain point that a lot of people feel in a certain certain group that maybe like when you're just starting that type of thing. So, um, you know, I think there's other creative ways that, uh, to get around that language, but it probably comes from just, oh, they heard someone else say it and they're just going to repeat it. So I just want to ask you, this, this, this wasn't on uh, the questions, but could you just share maybe uh, one tip or a couple of tips that you would advise to those who are listening? And thank you to those of you that are here for episode two of Creative Confessions with Wave Wild, who is a TikTok strategist and business coach, has been sharing so much knowledge today. So if you do have a question, do feel free to ask. But yes, Wave, do you have any tips that you can share outside of all of the amazing stuff that you have shared today? But anything that you might want to lean into that you haven't spoken about that much that might be helpful to those who are listening. I mean, if you are new to TikTok, um, you want to think, well, first of all, you want to consume content. I know a lot of people who start TikTok and they want to make videos and just repost everything from Instagram and they never scroll or spend any time on the app. It's really important to get a sense of the culture on TikTok. It is very different than other platforms, really built on authenticity. You don't have to show up as perfect. It it's, um, there's a lot of like playful kind of silly vibes with a lot of the trends and filters and those types of things. So you do want to get an idea of the culture. So I would say scroll, consume content and consume content within your niche. Use that search tool. Go see what other people in your niche are posting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And think about how um, that, you know, study that content, really think, look at it and mindfully and you know, think about like, how are they communicating this information? What are people saying in the comments? How long are their videos? How are they getting people to watch so long? What are they saying at the beginning of the video? Are they using call to actions? Answering these questions are going to help get your own creative juices flowing and think about yes. how can I share my message? And what would that look like? And yeah. that will help you a lot when it comes to creating content. And of course, think about what makes you unique or different and um, how can you put that into video? 
And it is about being yeah. unique, finding your own voice, your own way, your own style. And it is important to, like you said, spend time on the platform. And I think as well, a little bit of tuning out the noise, just tuning out and just and really mm -hmm. be focused on what is my end goal? What do I want to achieve for myself, but also for the community that I'm trying to build? And I think that once we start to just really get intentional in that and just tune out all the distractions, you then are able, like you've said, are able to shop consistently, which is something that people struggle with. Because again, it's a whole thing, oh, I'm not doing so well. I'm not getting the numbers. It's taking too long. I'm going to fall mm -hmm. off. So we just really yeah. need to go back to being consistent, being focused, understanding the culture of the platform as well, and really responding well to that. That's definitely 100% what mm -hmm. I, I would say. I'm not a TikTok expert <laughs> as such, yeah. but I definitely think I've seen that for myself. And I definitely think that, that that is what we should be doing. I think you have shared so much nuggets, gems and jewels today. Wait, oh, blimey. I've had the pr privilege of having the wonderful Wave Wild join me today and share with yourselves. Can business owners still have success on TikTok? Which evidently we can. And so Wave is going to share with you in a moment how she you can connect with her. But I do encourage every single one of you to connect with Wave, to follow her. Wave is somebody who I absolutely trust who definitely co-sign on what she's actually doing. So Wave, I'm going to pass this back to you and say, how can others connect with you? And any final closing positive words of inspiration that you want to leave the community with? Yeah, so you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram are my main platforms at Wave Wild. Uh, you know, the links are in my bio for all my freebies and good stuff. And, you know, you want to check out my website, wavewild.com. Uh, those are the best ways to get in touch. And yeah, my last words, you know, this kind of goes into what we were previously talking about just a moment ago. I was thinking about how if, and this might sound a little bit harsh, it's, it's a little tough love, I say it with love, but if you start comparing yourself to others on TikTok, you will fail. It is not serving you at all. So you have to be really, really careful with this. It's a mindset thing. Keep your blinders on if you have to, um, because as soon as you start doing that, it's only going to bring you down and you want those thoughts that are going to help uplift you, keep you motivated, focus on those wins, celebrate those wins. I love that. Focus on the things that are going to keep you uplifted, focus on your wins, your goals, mm -hmm. just and focus on the people, those who you want to serve. Because ultimately, yes. when we show up to serve, somebody who's going to connect with us, their lives are going to be transformed and are going to be changed. And that is such a powerful position right there. Wave, thank you so much for your time today. You have gone above mm. and beyond, over-delivered, shared. It's always lovely to talk with you. And as you know, from my heart to yours, anything that I can do to support you, I am so 100% behind you, cheering you on. And so are all the amazing people that are watching. So again, guys, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Make sure that you do connect with Wave. Wave, thank you so, so, so much for today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. Thank you. So that's it for episode two of Creator Confessions. I hope you've enjoyed today's session with Wave. I mean, listen, you guys have been stuffed to overflow. So make sure that you connect with Wave. As she said, across social media, Wave Wild. Go to her website, wavewild.com and go and check out what Wave is doing. She is sharing absolutely amazing, amazing tips. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us today because you yourselves could have been anywhere on social media, but you took some time to be here with us. And thank you to Stephanie, to Sylvia, to Martine, and to everyone else. And a big thank you to Wave. We will see you back here next week for episode three of Creative Confessions. And don't forget to check out all the information that will be linked in the comments below. Until next week, guys, take care and have a good day. Bye.